Thanks for tuning in to Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host, Kyle Brothers, and today we're gonna to talk about new bike setup. And this setup goes for used bikes as well. So whether the bike is brand new or just new to you, there are probably some things that you should be doing before you go out there and get some throttle time. I know it's tempting to just go out there and pin it or something like that on your new bike, but it's probably not the best idea. There's a few things that we should be checking. There's a few things we should go over. We should be torquing our bolts. We should be checking fluid levels. We should be checking our, our steering tension. We should be checking uh, a number of things. We might need to lean out our carburetor. So those are some of the things that I'm going to get into today. Some of the things that I do uh, before I start riding a bike, whether it's new or whether it's just new to me. Let's talk about your suspension clickers for just a second. The first thing, one of the first things I do, I do when I get a bike is I take all my clickers and put them basically right in the center. So what that means is I'll click them all the way out and then click them all the way in counting the clicks as I go and if let's say that that equals 24 clicks now you're all the way in and you know we have 24 clicks so cut that in half and then back it out 12 that way you know that your clickers are in the are in the middle of the of, uh, of their range so do that on your compression do that on your rebound down below and the same thing goes for the forks so make sure you get everything kind of set in the middle as a baseline and then you can adjust from there when you get out and ride while we're on the subject of suspension, we need to make sure that we have the correct amount of sag on our bike, which is essentially just adjusting the tension on our, on our spring here on our shock. So you can use a sag scale or you can use a, a measuring tape. You're gonna, need some, you're gonna need a couple people to help you with this. I've got videos on how to do that on my channel. If you just search it in the feed, you might have to have a different spring for your bike depending on your weight. If you're working with an EFI bike, like a four stroke, you probably won't need to do this. But if you're working with an older four stroke or any of the two strokes, you're going to have to look at your carburetor, see what jets are inside there. You don't have to take it off. All you have to do is just kind of loosen everything and swivel it towards you. You can generally get your idle jet out and your main jet out. And then from the other side, you can take your, your uh, rod out and see what's in there. And I'm gonna have to lean that out for my altitude. You may or may not have to do that for your altitude, but it's just a good idea to figure out what jets are in your carburetor carburetor write that down take a look at the manuals try to figure out where you need to go from there and uh, and that'll that'll help you a, a ton I like to go around and check all the bolts on, on the machine and just make sure everything is tight or that it's not loose. Uh, some of the bolts like up here on your triple clamps, these should be torqued with a torque wrench. I didn't bring a torque wrench out, but if you have an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter, you can pretty much go around the bike and basically check everything super quick. You just, you know, stick a T handle on there and just go around, check everything, check your axles, check, check all that stuff to make sure that nothing's going to fall off the bike. This one should go without saying because it's something that you're gonna do before a ride anyway, but you wanna check what your tire pressure is at. You wanna check and see if it's got tubeless on it or if it's got a moose bib on it. If it's a new bike, it's just gonna have tubes, but you never know if you've got a used bike. Uh, so check your tire pressure. The other thing too is check the knobs here on the, on, the side of your, on the side of the tire on the front. These knobs will start to tear off. You don't wear this out, like wear everything off, but some of the knobs start to break away from the, away from the tire, away from the carcass there. So you wanna check that and see if that's something you need to replace. I like to check the tension on, on my handlebars, on the steering collar here. Uh, basically what I want is I want the bike so it, the, the steering won't, the, steer, the handlebars won't actually just flop over when, when all the weight is off the bike. This one is set just about perfect where I like it. Uh, so it, it can fall, if you've got the handlebars most of the way over, it can fall on its own, but it's not just going to, going to do that. Um, the way that you do this is you'll loosen the top triple clamps, loosen on this bike, you're loosening the top triple clamps, you're loosening this pinch bolt and then you're putting the tension here on on this nut up here on the top and that will you can loosen that or tighten that and give yourself the correct amount of tension if the bike feels if you leave this so it's just super floppy then the bike might feel real, real skittish on the front end so you can you can tighten that down and uh, make it feel a little bit more stable and then obviously re retorque uh, this bolt and these you know your triple clamp bolts there Go ahead and check your coolant level. In fact, it's a good idea to check all levels on the bike, uh, especially on a used bike, because you have no idea how much coolant there is. But even on a new bike, you, you may not know uh, if, it, if it's completely full or not. If it's a new bike, you just want to check the level of your gear oil or your engine oil. If it's a used bike, I would recommend just changing the oil straight away as soon as you get it. 
because uh, that way you're going to know that it's got clean oil in there. You don't have to you know, worry about what the, what the previous owner did. Same thing would go for your air filter on the other side or under your seat. If it's a, brand, if it's a, a new bike, just to check to make sure that it's been oiled properly. If it's a, a used bike, uh, maybe put a new air filter in it or, or just check that to make sure you're good to go there. If your bike is like this one, a KTM two-stroke, you're gonna to wanna to pull the auxiliary spring out of the power valve here and see what spring it's got in it. You can do that by just laying the bike over on its side and then pulling these two six millimeter, six millimeter bolts out uh, and that will tell you if, if it's the red spring, the green spring, or the yellow spring, and you can adjust accordingly. I personally like to run the red spring in these bikes, uh, but not everybody does. A lot of people like to leave the yellow spring in them. You can also adjust the tension here on this bolt, uh, but start with the springs and then use minor, minor adjustments once you wanna cut, try to get everything dialed in. I also like to make sure that the person who installed the front tire knew what they were doing. So I'll typically loosen these bolts here on this side to, loose, to basically loosen this pinch bolt so that, the, so that the, this fork can flow side to side. You'll be, able to, you'll be able to push it back and forth. And then I will take the bike off the stand, compress it a few times, either by rolling on the driveway or something or getting there and compressing that fork. And that basically lets this thing align itself on the axle and then I'll tighten those pinch bolts back down. If you don't do that and this thing is bound up, it can make your forks act really, really funny and really, really stiff. Go ahead and inspect the chain. Make sure that you've got the right amount of chain check, tension. Check your manual. Uh, one of the ways that you can do this is if you get somebody to help you, you can reach over and uh, compress the, the bike all the way down uh, to where your, where your uh, swing arm is level. It takes a little, bit of, a little bit of tension there, a little bit of pulling. And, that, and then just see and make sure you've got just a little bit of play on your chain. This one I think is probably a little bit loose. Uh, you don't want to run them too loose, but you also don't want to run them too tight. So check your manual for the spec on that and make sure that your chain is in good condition. You want to check your controls on both sides and make sure that your clutch lever and your brake lever, lever are how you want them, not too far down, not too far up, and that they're adjusted properly on the handlebars as far as where you want them. It's also important to check the free play on your throttle and make sure that you do have just a little bit of free play on that, not too much, not too little. Uh, you want some free play and that the throttle is working completely with no, with no catching and no scratching anywhere. Uh, and then it snaps back okay. If that is dirty or it's not working properly, you'll probably need to take this apart, your steering, uh, your throttle assembly apart here and clean that out and possibly even get you know, a new throttle cable depending on if your bike is you or new, used or new. Uh, if it's new, you probably shouldn't need to worry about that. Well, thanks for watching guys. I mean, we didn't cover everything. I did mention like air filters, you gotta check those types of things. There's probably a hundred other things that you could be looking for. How to buy a used bike is probably gonna be a totally separate video because you're gonna wanna be checking a number of different things on a used bike. Um, some of the other things you might wanna do before you go out and ride your bike is you may wanna put like a, a skid plate on it. For the type of riding that I do, I think a skid plate is pretty much mandatory to pr pr protect the bottom of your bike. Um, you might want to run a rear disc guard. You might, write, what, you might want to run tubeless. I personally do. Probably the only things I'm going to do to this particular bike are install tubeless on the tires because I love that and install a skid plate and then I'm just going to ride the thing uh, once I go through all that list of things that I just mentioned on the setup. So go ahead and leave down in the comments some of the things that you do as far as setting your bike up when you get it new or used, new to you. And uh, if you like what we're doing here, please remember to like these videos and subscribe to the channel and share them with your friends. Thanks a bunch. Hey guys, if you didn't already know, Patreon is the best way to support Dirt Bike Channel. We've got some really cool rewards over there, so click on the link up here that you see to become a patron. That'll take you directly to our site and you can check everything out. Uh, you can donate as little as $1 per month and it would really, really help us out. Thanks a ton, guys.